So I don't like to generally say that this is the biggest thing to ever happen to an app. But in this case, it kind of is. And what I'm talking about is Lightroom. And what Adobe announced at Adobe Max 2023 for Lightroom addresses probably the biggest complaint or hesitation that Lightroom Classic users have had and really makes it hard not to give this app a shot. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so the biggest complaint that I've heard from Lightroom users is that they don't like to have to sync the photos that they import into Lightroom to the cloud. And that makes sense because you have a certain cloud quota storage based on what your subscription is. So you either have a terabyte, you might have 20 gigabytes, or you might have 100 gigabytes, depending on your Creative Cloud plan. You might have more because you can purchase additional space, but the point is that people just, I think, don't like that concept. Fortunately, with this newest version of Lightroom, you don't have to really worry about that anymore. So if I go back here and you can see on the top left, there are two primary tabs. The first is cloud and the second is local. Cloud is basically what Lightroom has always been. That is um, your entire library synced in the cloud. But now there's local. And if you click on it, you basically have the best way that I can explain it is a version of Adobe Bridge built right into Lightroom. So you now have a local file browser. And you can see here are a bunch of photos that I have. And if I look at the breadcrumbs here, it's located under the external drive that I have called Bokeh. Bokeh has all of my photos, the backups from Lightroom Cloud, as well as the photos that I don't sync to Lightroom. And those photos are under legacy photo backup, then 2008, then 2008, 10, too. So let me just show you really quickly. If I expand this and then go to legacy photo backup and then 2008, I scroll down, you can see there is the folder. Now you can do things with each of these folders. For example, you'll see there's a little star there. You can activate the star, which is basically a favorite just by clicking on it, or you can right click and then select add as favorite. And if you do that and go to the favorites tab, you'll see that folder is now over here. Now to give you a quick illustration of how this actually is an actual file browser, I can go ahead and right click and then show in finder and you'll see here in Finder or Explorer, if you're on Windows, there is the folder. Now let's say I go back here and I right click and I go to rename folder and I say dash Boston because that's where these photos were taken. You can now see that the folder name was updated in real time, which is really cool. Same thing goes for the file name. So if I have this file name here and I right click, I can go to rename and that file name will be updated in Finder. But similar to Lightroom Classic, Lightroom does not like it if you go to the finder here and rename folders or file names. If you do that, it could cause issues here. So if you do wanna change the folder name or the file name, do it in Lightroom the way I just showed you. Now, of course, this is still first and foremost a cloud-based ecosystem. And personally, I love that. That's why I switched from classic to Lightroom because I love the idea of having all of my photos, not just synced. I, this is a point that I think a lot of people forget. It's not that it's just synced, but it's also backed up. Like these are actual backups of your original files. So I have that, but also I have access to those photos on all of my devices, whether it's my iPhone, my iPad, uh, a web browser, or my computer. And that to me is something cool. And it's not just access to the photos, it's access to the entire edit history and access to a full editing suite. So I can do all kinds of things on any device. To me, that's the main value proposition. But I understand a lot of people aren't into that. And so now you have kind of a really nice compromise where you can start using Lightroom and choose the photos you wanna sync. And that's what I wanna show you right now. And what I mean by that is I got asked quite a bit well, you know, Brian, I want to use Lightroom, but I want to choose what I want to sync. I don't want to just sync everything that I import. Well, with this, you now can. So with this version of Lightroom in the local browser, you can choose to sync either an individual photo, multiple photos, or an entire folder. And to do that, so if I wanted to sync just one photo here, you can see there's this button, copy one photo to the cloud, if I select multiple photos, it'll say copy three photos to the cloud. Or if I go to this ellipse here or right click, you can see there's copy to cloud. That will copy the entire content of the folder to the cloud. And again, the benefit to that is once those photos are synced to the cloud, 
they're backed up and they're available on any device that you have running Lightroom and are logged in with that Adobe ID. So again, it's kind of cool. And you now have exactly what you were asking for as far as Lightroom Classic users are concerned, where you can choose which photos you want to sync um, and which ones you want to just keep locally. So I think that's a huge win. Now, on top of that, you have access to pretty much the entire editing suite in Lightroom. So let me find a collection. I had these photos here of, right here, of this clock tower in Boston. So you have things like photo merge. So let's say I select these three photos and I right click and go to photo merge. I have access to HDR, pano and HDR pano merge. And remember, these are just locally on the computer. These are not stored in the cloud. I can also go to enhance here and apply the new Denoise AI if I want to do that or apply super resolution. And that's pretty cool because you would think you would have to upload these photos to the cloud to take advantage of these intelligent and powerful features, but you don't. You can just do it right from your computer. And of course, you can open up any image here and go to the edit module here and have access to pretty much the entire editing panel, which is super cool. And again, none of this is stored in the cloud. You can make all of these changes here just by clicking on auto and do whatever you want and then export them. Now, let's say you do want to sync a photo to the cloud. So let's say this photo you want to sync, you want to have access to it. So all you need to do is click on this copy one photo to cloud. And what will happen is Lightroom will start uploading to the cloud. But you'll see in this dialog box that you will have access to all of the edits you made up until this point. Because what's happening is Lightroom is creating a copy of that photo. It's actually not moving the original to the cloud. It's creating a copy in the cloud. And so you can continue making edits to this local offline copy and you can sync those edits. You can continue syncing to the cloud. And what Lightroom will do is it will create versions of each time you sync. Let me show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on okay. And you'll see that Lightroom is starting to sync to the cloud here. And if I go to the cloud now and I go under all photos and then go to recently added, you'll see here is that photo in the grid view. So this is the photo that's being uploaded to the cloud and it's now a different version. All right, so now you can see this photo is fully in the cloud over here. Um, it's backed up and we're good to go. Now, let me go ahead back to local and let me go to that same photo. It was right over here. And you can see we still have all of the edits that we made, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna convert this to black and white. Now you can see the button label changes. It goes now to update edits to the cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on this. And here's the important point. It'll say, all right, cool. We're gonna upload this and we're gonna save it as a version in the cloud. So let's go ahead and click on okay. Now, if I go back to the cloud over here, I'm gonna see that the photo is updated. This is again, the cloud-based version. This is different than the local version. But if I go to the versions icon, you can now see the two versions. So this was the edited version. We also have the original. This was the first edit and then the second edit. So you can continue making edits on the local drive and sync those edits to the cloud. But just remember that it's not the same file. So like that file in Bokeh under the legacy photo backup, that actual photo file is different than the one in the cloud. And that's an important distinction. So in theory, once you have photos synced to the cloud, you could go ahead and delete those local photos because they're stored in the cloud. And also, if you go here to preferences and then go to cache, if you have this option enabled, which is store a copy of all originals, you'll have another backup. So let me show you what that looks like. If I go to finder here and I go to uh, Bokeh, which is the drive where I store my backups, there's this folder called Lightroom CC that's created automatically along with your Adobe ID. And then if I go to originals and then go to 2008, and then there's October 2nd, there is that original raw file. It's a backup of what's in the cloud. All right, so that's awesome. No matter which way you slice it, Adobe listened to its customers, especially its Lightroom Classic customers that may be interested in moving to Lightroom. Uh, and they built a local browser. And 
This is going to be a controversial statement, but I stand by it. I genuinely believe that this version of Lightroom is far superior to Classic. It's faster, it's more streamlined, and again, for me, the ability to sync and now to sync on demand photos so that they're available everywhere, that, that's just the coolest thing for me. With that said, there are a few, I guess, limitations or things you can't do on the local side. So let me show you those really quickly. So the first thing that should be obvious is that the local folders will not sync automatically to the cloud, which means that these photos that you see here will not be available on any other device except for this computer. If you want photos to be available on all your devices, obviously you can either copy them to the cloud or you can skip that altogether and under the cloud view, just click on add photos, which will import the photos in Lightroom the way it always worked and it will automatically upload to the cloud. The other thing you can't do is select multiple photos and group them into stacks. If you right click, you'll see that group into stacks is not supported, nor is ungrouping stacks. You also can't use the AI searching, which I think is one of the coolest features of Lightroom. And what I mean by that is, if I wanted to go here into the search bar and type in water, if I was working with the photos in the cloud, Lightroom would know which photos have water in it and it would show it to me, even if I didn't keyword them or add it into the folder or file name. But you can still filter by certain things. If you click on the filter icon here, you can filter by certain keywords, by the camera uh, location, if there is um, metadata there for the location. You can even filter by whether the photo is copied to the cloud. So if I click on yes, you'll see that one photo, or you can go ahead and click on no to see all the photos that haven't been synced. But as far as like search terms, pretty much things that you've keyworded. So there's sunset. So if I type in the word uh, sunset over here, it'll show me any photos. So here, if I go to the keyword mode here, you'll see that the keyword sunset has been applied, which is why it showed up in the search view. But again, if you have not used the AI search functionality of Lightroom, I mean, that is another huge feature. And then the last two features that are not available in the local view, uh, the first is versions. Uh, versions are not available currently for local only files and the people view. So if you have photos that have people in them locally, Lightroom won't do any sort of analysis, but if you sync them to the cloud, Lightroom will actually analyze them and will allow you to sort by them. So I'll say it one more time. I think what Adobe did is tremendous here. I really do think this is probably the biggest feature or the biggest change to Lightroom since it was launched because it brings the number one request for Lightroom Classic users that they don't want to sync or they want to choose what they sync. Now you can. And if you are interested in this, if you want to learn everything there is to know, especially if you're a Lightroom Classic user who wants to move over to Lightroom, I highly recommend checking out my new course called Lightroom Everywhere. The link's in the description below. It contains uh, over eight hours of easy paced lessons that go over everything you need to know about Lightroom. And I've updated it to include all of the new features that was introduced with this version of Lightroom and Adobe Max. So again, the link is in the description below. And I've got these other videos that are all about Lightroom Cloud. Check out this playlist to learn more.